Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hoag, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm AJ Hoag, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I train you to speak English fluently, to speak English confidently, to speak English effortlessly. When you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, join and commit, don't quit, at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com, my VIP program, will train you to speak English powerfully. EffortlessEnglishClub.com, that's where you join, that's where you start. All right, welcome. Today, our book club, book club chapter four of Brave New World. Now, this chapter, not a lot happens in this chapter, honestly. Um, it's more about the characters. We're really, the story's starting now. You know, the, the first three chapters, really, there was no story, really. Really just introducing us to the world, the world of Brave New World. So we got a lot of heavy stuff, right? We got a lot of uh, quite a uh amazing cr crazy stuff in the first three chapters now the kind of story starts with the characters because really there was almost nothing happening with characters in the first three chapters but now and from now in the story the story will be more focused on the characters bernard lenina um and a few others now we're live on facebook today live as usual for our book club Vladislav, Ibrahim, Eli, Nasser, lots of the same names. Nuruddin, you, you recognize a lot of these names, those of you who listen a lot. Fernanda, good to see you. Lisa, Mustafa, nice seeing you all. Good to see you all. Tell you what, let's just jump right in and uh, do our do the chapter. And then we'll come back and talk. Like I said, there's not a lot. It's actually kind of nice, I think, for us that um, there aren't quite as many heavy ideas in this one. So we get a little bit of a lighter chapter because really this chapter is introducing us to more of the psychology of the characters, especially Bernard, who's our main character. All right, let's just go on and do this chapter. Okay, so there's part one and part two for chapter four. First, we start with Lenina. She's one of our main characters, Lenina. And uh, so she's a popular girl. We start off, she's in an elevator, a lift, an elevator. The British call it a lift. And it's crowded, a lot of guys in there, and they're all smiling at her. It says she's popular. And at one time or another, she had spent the night with almost all of them. So again, we see this promiscuity, right, that in Brave New World, Men and women both are encouraged to have sex with lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people. No families, no love, no boyfriends or girlfriends, no commitment, no loyalty. None of that. They just want to just jump around and have sex with lots of people. And she's very attractive, Lenina. Then when she's in the uh, elevator, she sees Bernard. Bernard Marx. Remember, we've met him uh, in the last chapter. He's our main character. Now, Bernard's an interesting character because he's different, right? Everybody in Brave New World is the same, right? In their own little group. They're divided into like five groups and everybody in each group is basically the same. They think the same. They're programmed the same. They, uh, they even have almost the same genetics. And many of them have exactly the same genetics. But he's different. Something happened to him. They, you know, people, we've kind of, we'll see little things. They don't know why, but basically he's an alpha plus, meaning he's at the very top. He's in the very top group, the smartest group, the most intelligent group. But something happened to him. They don't know what, because he's not as big and strong as most of the people in his group, the alphas. So he's something different about him. He's uh, not as big as most of the alphas. He's not as strong. He's very intelligent, 
but physically not as strong and big. And um, he also, we can see emotionally, you know, right? He's got he's got kind of a bad attitude <laughs> about things. He's kind of nervous a lot, and he likes Lenina. And see, Bernard is not like all the other ones. Bernard does not want to just have sex with lots and lots and lots of people. He's kind of in love with Lenina. He's very focused just on her only. So they're in the elevator and Lenina sees him and he asks her to go on a date and she says yes. So in the elevator with everybody there, she says, oh, hey, Bernard, let's go on a date. You know, let's go on a date in a couple of weeks. And uh, Bernard's kind of embarrassed because other people are in the are in the elevator at the same time. He doesn't want to talk about it with the other people around. But Lenina kind of likes him too, in a way. She's not as deep, not as uh, intelligent as him, uh, not as individual as him. But there's something a little different about her because she's also like a little bit focused on just one person. It was this guy Henry before where she she still has sex with lots and lots of people, but... She has kind of a special feeling towards this one guy, Henry. And she also has a little bit of a special feeling about Bernard. She likes that he's a little different. There's something about him that she likes. So in this way, Lenina is a little different too. Not quite exactly the same. Because most of them don't like Bernard because he's different. So then they go up to the roof. And uh, there's a little section here I want to just mention. There's a lift man. There's, you know, kind of like in the old days where actually even in Japan still now, sometimes some department stores, they have an employee who will do the elevator, you know, press the buttons. There's an employee inside the elevator and they called the lift man, elevator man. And they said he's a simian creature, small simian means like a monkey, a monkey like creature dressed in black of an epsilon minus semi moron. So basically... A really, really, really stupid, small person. So remember, we have these groups. There's the alphas at the top and the epsilons down at the bottom. And the epsilons, they create them to be super, super stupid and small and kind of weak also. All right, then there's another character we meet, Benito Hoover. He's... uh. After the um, after they get out, they go up to the roof, and Lenina leaves. Lenina gets into a helicopter. We'll see this next chapter more. She gets into or a little later. She gets into a helicopter with Henry, her date, her her current date. And um, Bernard Marx, our our main guy, he talks to this guy Benito, and Benito is very cheerful. They, so that's his main thing. He's always happy. He's always cheerful. They say he's so cheerful he does not need drugs. Remember, in this world, they have soma, they call it soma. It's the perfect drug that makes you feel happy and you go off to like a fantasy world and everything. So anytime anybody feels bad, anyone's depressed, anyone's angry, any bad emotion in Brave New World, they take this drug soma to forget about all their problems. So um, Benito sees that Bernard looks nervous because of Lenina. So Benito says, here, take some of this drug. Take some of Soma. You'll feel better. So this is their reaction. Anytime anyone feels bad, immediately they want to take this drug. But Bernard leaves. He ignores him. And next, um, Lenina gets into a helicopter. So they have kind of like flying cars, basically, right? This is the future. So they have flying cars, and they ri take a ride together. And they basically just fly over London. And uh, they go to a, like a, a place where they can get a, like a rocket. A rocket. So they're going to fly over to America to play golf, to play obstacle golf. And uh, it only takes them 10 minutes because it's a rocket. So they fly, fly from London over to America in about 10 minutes to play. They call it obstacle golf. Remember, all the games in Brave New World have a lot of equipment. So normal golf, you only it's too simple. So they add a lot of equipment. To, so you have to buy a lot of stuff and spend a lot of money. 
So that's it. That's all of her section. Part two focuses on Bernard. And basically, we start to get into his psychology in this section. And we just see that he's not happy. He's a very unhappy guy because he does not fit in. He does not fit into Brave New World. Everybody else is just happy and distracted, focused on sex, 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 and drugs, drugs, drugs. But not him. He doesn't like those things. He doesn't care about that stuff. He gets nervous about things. She, he's, a, he's jealous of Lenina. He's jealous that Lenina is going to have a date with Henry because everybody else is just having sex. Nobody's jealous. They're all having sex with every, each other. But um, Bernard's kind of jealous. He doesn't like that. He's kind of in love with her. He feels, he feels something special for her. And then it kind of talks about him that one of the problems with what makes him different is that he's physically different. Bernard is smaller than most alphas, right? In this world, the alpha's at the top, alpha plus, the very highest level. Well, he's got the intelligence of the highest level, but for some reason, his body is a little smaller, not quite as big, and this has made him different. It makes him feel different than everyone else, and everyone realizes he's different. He's not the same as all the other alphas. And they kind of joke about him. They make fun of him. They bully him a little bit, and that makes him feel like an outsider. It makes him feel like he's outside of the society. He's not part of it. This is important for our story because this is why he becomes more and more red-pilled, because he doesn't fit in to all this craziness. So then um, Bernard, he takes a little helicopter. He goes to meet another friend of his. And the friend's name is Helmholtz Watson. Helmholtz Watson. So he flies over to the propaganda ministry, the propaganda college. That's where Watson works. Helmholtz Watson. Watson, his friend, works there. And they're going to go and just and have a conversation. They, they're good friends. Now, what's interesting about Watson, Watson's kind of, uh, he's also different. He's not the same. He's also alpha plus. He's the top, top group. But um, he's different. Bernard is a little bit smaller and weaker, so that's why he's different. But Watson's different because he's better than everybody else. He's actually even smarter than the other alphas. He's even stronger than the other alphas. He's superior to all of them. He's better than them. And that also makes him feel different. That also makes him realize that he's an individual, that he's different. He's not the same as all the others because he's better. And then it says, why are they friends? And, uh, you know, Aldous Huxley writes, what the two men shared was the knowledge that they were individuals. This is an important uh, point. So in Brave New World, nobody feels like an individual, right? They all feel like they're all just part of this big group, all part of the same big group, alpha or beta or whatever. They don't feel like they're individuals. They don't have individual thoughts. They don't have individual creativity. They all think the same. They all act the same. But not these two. These two are different. They realize they're different. Bernard, because he's smaller, and Watson, because he's smarter and better. And because of that, because they both feel like they don't totally fit, they both feel that, ah, we're both kind of different than everyone else. We're individuals. We're unique. There's something unique about us, special, unique. And so they become friends. They could become friends because they share this feeling. So then they have a conversation, and um, Watson talks to Bernard and tells him, like, I feel like I can do more. I feel like I can do more in my life. Like, I, he's just working propaganda, but... Watson has this feeling. He's, it's not a clear feeling, not a clear feeling. But he has a general feeling, a general idea that he needs to do something more important, that his life should have more meaning, a bigger purpose. He wants to contribute in a bigger way. He wants to do something that's more meaningful, more deep. So he's starting to have this, these thoughts of not only individuality, but contribution meaning, 
philosophy, right? Just the beginnings of these thoughts. Interesting, right? He's starting to wake up also. So much like Neo in The Matrix. I just watched the first part of The Matrix. It reminds me a lot of the beginning of the movie where Neo is also. Neo is not awake yet, but he's just starting to wake up and he just feels like there's something wrong in the world and he feels different and he feels like there should be more. There should be something more, some more meaning. It's so similar to Brave, I mean, to The Matrix. Like uh, Watson says, I have a feeling I have something important to say and I have the power to say it, but I don't know what it is. I feel like I could do something much more important. Then uh, Bernard is kind of paranoid because he's, people make fun of him because he's different. Bernard thinks somebody's listening to them at the door and to their conversation and he runs to the door, but there's no one there. And, uh, and Watson kind of at the end of this chapter, he's kind of thinks poor Bernard, Bernard needs more confidence. I wish Bernard would have more confidence more pride, more confidence. All right. And that's it. So as you can see, Nothing too deep. I think the main um, ideas here, the main ideas are um, really about individuality. This, this, uh, this idea that each of us is unique, you know, created by God uniquely, that we have our own unique strengths and weaknesses and uh, purpose, all of these things. And in we, this is a common idea now, but in Brave New World, they want to eliminate this. They want to destroy this idea of individuality because it's dangerous again. It's dangerous to the controllers. Individuals might make a different decision. They might break free. They might become free. They might do something creative. They might uh, go against the powerful controllers. So individuality is not good for the controllers. So that's it. We're kind of just setting up the story now more. That's really all. It's a simple, simple chapter. And uh, let's just go to comments and questions now because I don't have a lot to add for that. I think that's the, you know, the main point's pretty clear. Mostly about that individuality point is the main thing. We're seeing that the main characters here, the main characters here are a little different. That's the key point here, right? There's something slightly different. Now, Lenina, only a little bit, not so much. Lenina's the most same as everybody. She just has a, a few little things. She likes Henry, and he's dating him more than she probably should in this world. And she kind of likes Bernard. So she's, she's developing a little bit of special feelings for two people, and in this world, that's a little strange. Now, Bernard and Watson are much more different. They're very different for different, you know, one because he's smaller, the other because he's so much better. Giuliano says he saw The Matrix this morning. Fantastic. Tomorrow, I'm going to do a show on Twitch. I have an idea. I have kind of a new idea, a different idea about how to do this uh, movie club. I think hopefully you guys will like it. But I'll discuss it tomorrow. Okay, let's keep. I'm almost uh, just going through the comments here. A lot of people saying hello. Good to see you. Marcin says it's really fascinating that such a small group of people have taken control over the whole population over the last centuries. If we think about it, it seems impossible, but they did. Yeah, well, they. It's the concentration of wealth, of of money and power which is, you know, in our societies. Because you could really go back, you know, thousands of years. You could go back before the, you know, the Egyptian pharaohs, right? Where that gradually more and more power concentrated into smaller, smaller, smaller number of people. And as technology gets stronger, this gives them more and more power to control larger groups of people. So it, you're right. It's kind of scary, isn't it? Merrick quotes 
the chapter. Benito was cheerful, so he did not need any drugs. I think each of us can enjoy life and not find it in drugs or alcohol. My tips are learn to appreciate what you have. When bad thoughts get you, think about something positive. Become your best friend. Give yourself a gift every day. Take care of yourself. Go for a walk. Don't look for joy in drugs or alcohol. You'll not find it there. Unfortunately, I know what I say. Yeah, you know, like I said, you find temporary short-term pleasure in those things. But um, long-term, it's the opposite. All right, let's scrolling through, guys. Oh, a uh, cab question from Cardo. What do you mean by fit in? Fit in means you belong to a group. You fit in the group, right? It means you're the same as them. You belong. You feel like you're part of the group. If you don't fit in to a group, if you don't fit in, then you feel like you're not part of the group, really. You feel like you're kind of different, like they don't accept you or you don't accept them totally. You don't quite fit in. Marcin again with the, about the Rothschilds. I heard people like the Rothschilds marry other members of their family to keep bloodlines. Yeah, they're really into bloodlines. They don't want people like us to be around them. They feel like they are better than us. Oh, for sure they do. Now, what's comical is that, you know, they're not. If you look at them, they look really weak, and um, but they have money. You know, they have centuries of collecting this power and money, and that has given them a great deal of power. Individually, not very much. You could probably kick their ass pretty easily but you know but there's they have power in other ways but yes that's right they view us like animals just like the controllers in brave new world do they want to they want total control over us and everyone shagul says the more i awaken the less i desire to fit in yes that's what happens when you take the red pill um, in the beginning, kind of, well, we're seeing it in this book and we see it in the Matrix movie. We'll see it there too. That, um, in the beginning, as you wake up, as you start to wake up, it's not, uh, it's not enjoyable. It can be painful. Uh, it's very common to be very, very angry. It's also very common to be very, very sad and depressed. It's probably the two most common emotional reactions as you begin to wake up to all of this in our world. And in Brave New World, we see this. Bernard is not happy. He's really unhappy. Even Watson, who's so great at everything, so successful, he's just, there's something that feels wrong to him. And he's kind of restless and he doesn't quite feel right. And in The Matrix, when Neil takes the red pill, it's horrible. It's painful, terrible. He's super shocked and upset. So it's the f first step as you wake up is usually that. But then as you get past that, then you start to figure out your own way and you find greater happiness and then you don't want to fit in. You realize fitting in means unhappiness. Fitting in means ignorance. Fitting in means being a slave. So when you don't fit in, you actually begin to have a much more happy life and you don't care about other people's opinions so much. You don't care about being the same as others. You don't care. Shrook says, the world in this book is scary. Well, you're living in it right now, so you should be scared. You're living in it. It's already real. A few exaggerations, maybe, but... Med says, some people take individualism as being selfish and not caring about others or society. I think this uniqueness would have no use then. Yeah, no, no, no. I think it's... um. You know, the healthy way is it's quite connected to that book we read, Seven Habits. Remember that? Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You are an individual and uh, you do have your own unique. I mean, you just just biologically, you have your own unique genetic structure. You have your own unique um, life history, you know, life experiences that are different than other people's. Of course, you also have a lot of similarities, right? It's both. Um but, you know, just as uh, 
It's just what we say. We are both individuals and part of a group. It's, it's again, these, this false choice that we get in school. That I'm an individual or I'm part of a group. Like you have to choose. No, you're both. You're obviously both. We are social creatures. We are part of, uh, you know, we're born into families. We're part of families. We're part of uh, extended families. We're part of, you know, nations. All of these groups. Of course we are. Of course. And we're also individuals. Individuals who are also connected. You know, and so uh, we have a, a duty, an obligation, um, an enjoyment on both sides. Number one, like the book said, Seven Habits the book said, we have to develop ourselves, our own virtues. We have to develop our own virtues. That's our individual uh, purpose or mandate or job or duty. And then once we develop ourselves to a good enough level that we're, we have something to give, we have enough skills, enough knowledge, enough goodness. Then we have also these duties and obligations and, uh, you know, happiness to contribute to other people, starting with our families, right? So it's both. And when we become a happy member of, uh, like, our fa have a happy family and we're contributing well to our family, this also makes us individually feel happier. So they, they're, they're connected to each other. Miat says, what are bloodlines? It just means like the genetic um, connection of, uh, of a family, you know, like father, son. They are on the same bloodline, the same genetic line. And a, a lot of these groups, they, they marry each other. They marry their cousins. And this is why they're kind of messed up. Maybe that's why they're so evil because <laughs> they're actually psychotic now. They've, they've really messed up their brains now by doing that too much. One theory. Okay, now Mikhail says, when are you going to do the first part of the movie, The Matrix? Um, to, whoops, wrong one. Let me get my calendar. I'll give you a date. Uh, what is today? Where is it? Uh, today's 29th. So um, the 7th, July 7, Sunday, about this time, about. 8 p.m. Uh, Japan time, so July 7, right? So not tomorrow, but the next day. But tomorrow, I'll talk about the book club because I have, I mean, the movie club. I have some ideas about doing it a little differently than I said. I, 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 today, I kind of got a couple ideas to do it. Um, I, I think you'll like it because it's going to be more like an English lesson. I'll do, t use it a little more detail using a little more of the movie technique. Um, but then I also have some ideas about how to do the live versus the recording. Live will still be on Twitch. Okay. Vladislav says, I read a story today about programming people. An angel came to a man at night. The angel told the man, from now, all water in the world will be poisoned. Anyone who drinks it will go crazy. So take some clean water and wait until the water's clean again. The man did that. And he tried to warn people. But people thought he was crazy and they drank the water and they went crazy. Gradually, all people became crazy except that man. And the man didn't fit in anymore. All people thought the man was crazy. The man finally drank water and went crazy as well. Yeah, right? <laughs> kind of like Brave New World, right? This is Bernard's problem problem, and Watson's problem. Everybody else is crazy. They are waking up. They are waking up and becoming sane again. But everyone else is crazy. So what happens, right? When that's the situation, you don't fit in. And they all think you're crazy. They all say, no, no, you're the crazy one. This is why Dharma is so important. This is why these... Are these ancient teachings and the Dharma and natural law are so important? That's how you know. It's not subjective, it's objective. And this gives you an objective reality. Nasser says people are brainwashed, they just follow each other like a herd. A herd is like a group of animals, like cows. They're never thinking or questioning about something, they accept things as it is. Yes, most people. Yes, that's right.
Lisa says, Bernard and Helmholtz are starting to wake up. Here is already noticeable that s with some people in the development machine, mistakes, errors happened, failed to make them perfect. That's right. Even with their machine of with the babies, still something happened. You know, nature ends up winning in the end. <laughs> uh, it's a kind of a nice message. Um, it's actually a message of Michael Crichton, too, the guy who wrote Jurassic Park, that no matter how much we try to control, no matter how much power we as humans get, and so even in Brave New World, they have this, they think they have complete, total, 100% control over everything from before babies, and yet still something happened. Still something happened, and they have these two guys who are different. Somehow, something happens still. You know, maybe it's random chance. You could call it, uh, I don't know, spiritual intervention, whatever it is. But that's a nice point. Marianne says, Limitation lives only in our minds. If we use our imaginations, our possibilities become limitless. When you focus on problems, you'll have more problems. When you focus on possibilities, you'll have more opportunities. Well said. Tuan asking my live shows, when do they begin at a consistent time? Not exactly consistent because it depends on my babies when they become calm. <laughs> but generally, Japan time between 7 or 8 p.m. I start around there, 7, 8 p.m. So you just have to watch my Gab, watch my Twitter and around that time. Oh, Mikhail's going uh, to join the movie club. He says, Sundays are perfect for me. I'll follow you. Great. Follow me on Twitch if you want to do live. You should do live. Muhammad Dawood says, My journey in English started with you since Bubba's Food in 2008. Way, way back. I'm pretty sure that in the end, God will win against the devil. Yes. But knowing ourselves deeply, guide us to natural law more. That's the key. Indeed. Indeed. We still have to fight. We still have our duty to fight. Cleefy with a good question. How to mix or how to do both become awake and do our duty to others? Well, I think you have to focus your, your efforts with other people. You have to focus on people you can save and people that are closest to you. Of course, your family. Of course, your family, especially your wife and children, your husband and your children. Um, your closest family, focus there. And um, in your own life, of course. And, uh, you know, others, if they, you, if you find others that, are, you, that want to be awake, you know, they're kind of a little bit like Bernard. They're a little bit like uh, Watson, um, Helmholtz, that there's something where they're they feel something's wrong and they they kind of looking for answers. Those people you can help. Other people who are totally blind, totally blue pill, totally closed. Don't waste your time. You can try one time with them, and if they're totally closed, just move on to someone else. Yeah, Marcin says in Seven Habits. The writer says we shouldn't focus on things we have no that don't we have no influence against, no impact on. But I think this is a specific topic of mind control is something you must know. Though you have no control over what the elite families do, the awareness is important. It's important because you have control over your own mind. You have influence on your mind. So yes, we must understand this because if we don't understand it, then they can do this. They use these techniques against us and then you become a mental slave and you don't even know it. So that's why it's so important, e even individually, to do this, uh, just so you can wake up. Mikal is asking, will Star Wars A New Hope be in our movie club? Yes, one of my favorite movies, Star Wars, the first, the original Star Wars, yes. 
Ah, Merrick with a good point. Register early on Twitch. You have to wait 24 hours to add comments. Good point. If you want to comment on my live Twitch videos, you should register now so that tomorrow you'll be able to comment. Abraham Ali. We all should not follow the herd like everyone else. So by taking the red pill, we can join the top 1%. It's a good point. I want to talk about that. We'll be different, fearful, and awakened. For example, everyone is afraid of homeschooling. They're afraid of criticism. They don't want to take the risk and be different. So they take the easy way following the herd. Yes, 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 yes. This point about the 1% is excellent. You know how to be in the 1%? Not by becoming a billionaire, by becoming awake. See, here's the good thing. When you wake up, when you take the red pill, when you're not afraid of fitting in or not fitting in, you start to make better decisions. You will have so much more happiness and success in your life. Your performance in all areas of life will be better. You will be at the top 1% because you're awake, because you do these things. For example, homeschooling. Your children will be far, far ahead of all other children academically and socially and uh, in terms of their confidence. And your family will be so much stronger and closer than most other families. It actually gives you, you know, a competitive advantage if you want to think of it that way, like in, in society that we have, you know, there's competition for jobs, there's competition for different things. Well, by waking up and uh, kind of doing the red, taking the red pill and doing these things and living differently, You'll become more financially free. You'll have a better education. You'll continue to learn. You'll be healthier. Like fasting is another one. Fasting is another one. I'm, it's an amazing thing. Most people don't do it. Um, and so you just you will be top 1% in the world because of this. Because of this. Not in terms of money, but in terms of your quality of life. The quality of your life will be so much better. You know, I can, I'll can. i talk about America. You know, the most Americans, they're, they're fat, they're unhealthy, they're tired, they're working too much, they're stressed out about money. So when you wake up to all of those things, you'll be less stressed about money, more financially free, more healthy, more fit, more energy, better family, closer family, better relationships, learning more and more all the time. It's a great way. That's the true way to become part of the 1%, the real 1%. Twan's asking, uh, I got a question. When we start to recognize the terrible things, then we can start to think of negative all the time. How do we cope with this and still be happy? Right. Well, that's kind of what I was saying. You know, that it's the first stage. It's normal. The first step, you're going to be angry or sad or both for a while. And then you begin to find, see, right, then you have to figure out, well, how do I live in Brave New World? You know, we're living in it now. How do I live in Brave New World and still be happy? Well, you have to make different choices. You have to be strong enough to go against all of those bad things. Right? You live a Dharma life. You live, you follow Dharma. You follow natural law. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. And then you become happier. You get through the anger. You get through the sadness. And then you become much happier as you more and more make your life to fit and follow Dharma, truth, goodness, beauty. You have a beautiful life, a truthful life, and a good life. So it's just don't, don't, don't worry in the beginning. If you feel bad, it's normal. Just keep going. Mikal is recommending, I wish we could do Dune in our book club in the future. That's a cool book. It's complicated. It's sci-fi. So there's a lot of, um, it's very sci-fi. There's a lot of kind of uh, strange vocab that's not really English. Um, but it's a great, great book. Very great story. Um, eh, I'll think about it. Think about it. Asma says, I agree when you have the ability to think, but in Brave New World, they're programmed from being a baby. 
So it's hard to go against. Exactly. That's why they want to do it. It's interesting. In The Matrix, it's the same thing. You'll see in the movie The Matrix, they also, the machines control the humans from a baby, from a baby. So we're seeing the same message again and again, that these elites, they want our children. They want to control our children. This is so important to them because that's how they, they think they can totally eliminate, totally destroy freedom. They can have total control by getting our children younger and younger. This is why they want school younger and younger and younger to start. This is why they want to make school more hours every day. This is why they don't want summer vacation from school. They want the children to be in school all year, all the time. So be careful. This is why they're doing all this stuff with you know, trying to sexualize children. They're doing it in America with all this trans crap. It's horrible. Haidar says, you should be self-disciplined to protect yourself from the badness of the modern world, which mostly depends on controlling by pleasure. And Haidar is exactly right. Here's another solution. Discipline. Because exactly, most of the control, it's definitely after birth, the control in Brave New World, and indeed in our world, is through pleasure. They get you with addiction to pleasure, addiction to food, addiction to sex, to pornography, uh, addiction to distraction and media. It's your own weakness they use against you. They use your weakness against you. So what's the solution? You become stronger, become disciplined. Discipline gives you power. Self-discipline equals power. And when you have power over those addictions, when you develop self-discipline, then you become free. Then you start to choose your own way. And you will find greater long-term happiness. This is, again, why I recommend fasting because it develops very strong discipline. Exercise, I also recommend that. It develops discipline. Anything that develops discipline, do it. Cleefy, speaking of fasting, I'm still overcoming my fears. My experience with fasting is giving great results. I was 96 kilograms. After six days, I'm 92 kilograms. Whoa, you rock, dude. Wow. Nice. Four kilograms. That's about eight pounds in six days. Amazing, huh? Wonderful feeling. The food tastes very good. I'm feeling I'm controlling my life and myself. Thank you, AJ. Yes. Good job. My current weight, I'm 71 kilograms now. 71. I started at 80. It took me about a month, so I'm losing a little bit slower than you, but I'm still doing great. Feel fantastic. Feeling really good. Excellent. Elita is um, recommending The Little Prince for one of our next books. That's a nice little book. Yeah. That would be a good book club book. It's a cute little book, very nice, nice little message in it, and uh, simple, not not too complicated, short. So good idea, the little prince. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. Ah, uh, here's one. From Kade Somo, I've been wondering why I always feel frustrated to express how I feel about things since I was young. Especially, I don't know what love is and I never felt it. More doubtfully, I always ask myself, even if I'm an uncivilized human, if I have spirits inside me or a soul. Do I have a soul? I know other feelings of sensation, such as being afraid and excited, but I don't think I've ever loved someone, even myself. What should I do? Here's the thing. Love is not... An, an emotion it's a it's a decision there's a nice book i think with that title love is a commitment it's a decision you make okay it's not just some feeling okay that feeling can come and go very quickly you can be attracted to someone oh and the heart's beating and oh, 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 i love them right and then you know a couple months later that's gone um so love is really a decision to contribute to someone else, to care for them, 
to appreciate them, to accept them as they are, to try to understand them. So that's what you try to do. That's how you develop it. Try to really, genuinely, sincerely understand other people, the people closest to you. Start with them, right? And then start to think, like, how can I make them happy? What can I do, unselfishly, not to get something? What can I do to make them happy? By giving and by understanding, by making these actions, this commitment, eventually then you will start to get a feeling of love. But too many people have this Hollywood idea. They think that, oh, I'll just start feeling it. No, 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 no. So that's my recommendation for you. Stop thinking about yourself. Your feelings are irrelevant. Don't worry about feelings. Don't worry about feelings. Start focusing on someone else in your life and trying to understand them as wet, deeply as you can. Accept them as they are, meaning accept their weaknesses, accept their problems, accept the things that are not you don't like about them, and still accept them and forgive them. And then start to think, how can I contribute to them? What can I just do to, to help them, to make their life a little happier? That's it. Just do that. It's the action. That's love. It's the actions. It's the effort and the actions, not some emotion that comes and goes. People should be financially free in all aspects of life, ideally. But unfortunately, in, our, in poor countries, all people should follow the government. That's not true. Don't follow the government. Screw the government. The government is not your friend. It is your enemy. Every country, the government is your enemy. You, you don't need a lot of money to be free. It's not about money. Yeah, so Marcin with a nice uh, uh, slang. I'm definitely black-pilled in our society. When I'm out there, I really don't see anything good. People walk around like zombies. It's easy to be black-pilled, but you have to get out of that because you have to be... You have to remember it doesn't matter about most people, okay? Look at any, uh, you know, I'm trying to remember the statistics. I don't know where they come from, but let's just say the American Revolution. Like I've read different statistics, but basically the American Revolution against England, only about like less than 5%, less than 5% of Americans, the colonists at that time, f actually fought against the British. Less than 5% fought against the British Empire and they won, and they created a new country and a whole new system. So 95% did nothing. 95% just followed along and did nothing. This is normal. This is normal. And this kind of statistic is true if you look at most big changes in different places in the world. Most people don't do anything. So you don't need most people. You only need a small group uh, of people with high morale. This is why black pill is dangerous. We've got to keep our morale high. We're in a long, long war, a culture war, a mental war, an information war, a spiritual war, and it's going to go on for generations. Okay, This is not going to end in our lifetime. So you have to keep your morale high, keep your confidence high, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, and create a happy life for yourself and your family. And don't, you know, the zombies will be zombies. You're not responsible for them. Yeah, like Lisa has good advice. It's very important we have a spiritual life, develop strong faith in us, create inner stability, balance, and togetherness. So there's no separation. We'll be much stronger together. That's right. Just like I talked about recently by making what is Brave New World attack? They attack families. They attack children. They attack love and connection. Right? So how do you fight against it? Focus on your family. Build strong families. Have lots of children. Uh, homeschool your children. Create, train your own children. Keep them away from all of that. You do the opposite. You do the opposite. Have a spiritual life. Uh, the Brave New World attacks God, hates the idea of God or spiritual life. So develop a strong spiritual life, at least a strong philosophical life. Because again, Brave New World, they hate thinking. They hate people who think about life and the meaning of life and where does life come from and what is the purpose. They don't want them to think that. So think about those things and read those kind of books.
Okay. Um, let's see. Hello, teacher. I'm Ardak from Kazakhstan. In one of your videos, you have mentioned it was surprised why book club members like fiction literature more. Oh, yeah, I did a poll, P-O-L-L, -L, uh, asking which what were your favorite books, and the fiction books won. There were more votes for fiction than nonfiction. I think you and many, many members will agree it's because you're the best storyteller. It makes any book lively and interesting. Okay, that makes sense, yes. I mean, it does make sense. Stories are interesting. Stories have more emotion in them, right? Nonfiction books are not usually emotional. They're, they have good information, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, good information. Seven Habits, good information, useful. But they're not as emotional and colorful as a fiction story. Yes, that makes sense. I understand. But we'll continue to do both continue doing both fiction and nonfiction. Jamal says it's very it's really important to feel in harmony with our values. Yes, this is a, this is called integrity in um, English integrity is when your values, you know, uh, your virtues that you want to live are you're actually doing them right if you value honesty you know honesty is a virtue then it means you really are honest in your life for example so yes it is important and it does create a strong feeling of confidence and happiness as you do that more and more it's not always easy we all know that so really quickly let me just uh well well, more comments are coming in. Uh, we've got about five more minutes and I have to go. But um, so tomorrow I'm going to talk about it. I thought of an idea today for the movie club. So my original idea, which I mentioned before, was uh, we'll divide the movie into six parts about. And uh, and then each week I would just generally, I would review, I'd summarize that part of the movie. And then I would kind of discuss the major ideas, the main ideas. And then we would do question and answers as usual, discussion as usual. But I started to think maybe I could actually do it a little more like an English lesson. So do all of that, still do what I just said, yes. But also teach a little more of the vocabulary, like show a few minutes, like a little speech or a little section of the movie. Use a little bit of the movie technique to review some of the phrases and vocab so you actually learn a bit more English. And what I'm thinking of doing is doing that live on Twitch and it would be free, but then recording it, and then later, for people who want to watch it later, sell it as a, like a little small course. Uh, so a, like a less expensive course. And this would do a few things. Number one, if you want to do it, if you don't have any money, you can watch it live and get it free. And in fact, I think I can figure out on Twitch that maybe even it would be available on Twitch for like one week. Because on Twitch they kind of disappear, like like on uh, like uh, Periscope used to be. So that would give people who really want to just need it to be free. You can just watch it free. But then people who want a recording, like a long term permanent recording, then I will record it and then I'll sell it on my website. Uh, not too expensive. And this would be a way for you to get like movie technique courses. I could do them several every year. And this would support Effortless English. It would support the podcast. You know, many of you have mentioned maybe like I should do some kind of membership or something to support the show. But this would be a way to support the show. And then I don't have to use, I don't need to depend on Google, can't trust Google, can't trust YouTube, can't trust Facebook. That way I can just, uh, by selling these little um, recorded movie uh, technique courses, uh, it would support the blog, support the show, the podcast. Um, and it would give you all some cool movie technique lessons. And I wouldn't have to worry about the copyright stuff on these other uh, channels. So I think that might work. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. You'll still can watch it. You'll still be able to participate live for free. So it's kind of a good reason to watch and join the live show on Twitch.
Hydar says, what is red pill, blue pill? Tell you what, I'm, I'm not going to explain it now um, because watch our Matrix movie club. You're going to get a good explanation. Red pill, I'll give you the short version. Red pill means you're awake. You see the truth. Blue pill means you're asleep. You believe the lies. But we're going to get a lot about red pill and blue pill in the Matrix because that's where it comes from. Vladislav, education is getting worse and worse now. Oh, I agree. I have a bright example. My cousin just graduated from medical college in the Russian city of St. Petersburg. When she applied, it was a popular college in the city. It prepared to be a great nurse. Professors were great. But a terrible director came. Everything became worse. Good professors were fired. Many terrible ones were hired. So a woman at the top has destroyed everything. Education is terrible now here. Everywhere education is terrible, Vladislav. Everywhere it's getting worse. America's a joke. You think Russia's bad. America's 10 times worse or more. American education is a joke. I would never send my child to an American school. Never. It's a disaster. It was already becoming bad when I was in school. And now it's just a disaster. Education is part of Brave New World. Education is garbage now. This is why you must be the boss of your own education. You must be the boss of your own independent education. And this is another way to be in the top 1% as a self-learner, as an independent learner. You will learn so much better and so much more than all these people in schools. So it's a great advantage you have as an independent learner, a big advantage you have in all areas of life. All right, guys, I think that's all. Well, I'll be back again tomorrow. So that's a good one. Brave New World Chapter 4. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, like I said, this chapter, fairly light, mostly introducing us to the characters Bernard Marx, our main character, Helmholtz Watson, his friend, they're both different. And then Lenina, that Bernard likes her, kind of kind of in love with her. She's a little different, but the other two guys are very different. That's all. Well, next week we'll do chapter five. Tomorrow, join me on Twitch, Twitch TV Live, about this same time again, starting twitch.tv, twitch.tv. Follow me at AJ Hogue, A-J-H-O-G-E. You should follow me now because you can. You have to wait 24 hours after you follow me until you can comment. That's like a Twitch thing. Um, so if you want to comment, you gotta. You should follow me right now. And in the future, if you want to do, if you want to get the free movie club, if you don't want to buy it, if you want to get it free, live, joining it live, then again, follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv. My account is AJ Hoog. And of course, as always, join my VIP program. That's where you really learn to speak English fluently and powerfully and effortlessly. You've got to commit to my VIP program at effortlessenglishclub.com. Go there now, effortlessenglishclub.com.